Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's try to find the volume of a cone. The cone made of the portion of a sphere. Notice what we do here is we start at the center and we'll go radially outward in all directions at some angle, let's say 30 degrees. And of course the top is going to be part of the surface of the sphere. When we take that and make it look like this, notice that when we integrate around the cone like this, that would be an angle of of theta going all the way around 360 degrees. Then we have an angle going from the center of the cone to the edge of the cone, that would be the angle phi. And then the distance rho, the radius from the center to the edge would still be rho, or the radius of the cone, or of the sphere. And then if we do a cross section, you can see that you have this, which is of course three dimensional in this direction. And then we have the top of the cone, which is really the surface of the sphere. So that's what we're trying to find the volume of. And again, we're going to have a volume element dV, which is going to be defined as rho square sine of phi d rho d theta d phi. So that never changes. What does change here is the limits of integration. We're still going to integrate from the center of the sphere to the edge, from 0 to r. We're still going to allow a complete 360-degree integration all the, all the way around the angle theta. And then we're going to come down 30 degrees from the top to where the edge of the cone stops, that would be pi over 16 radians or 30 degrees in the angle. So now we can go ahead and say the volume is going to be equal to the integral of the dv, the triple integral, over the three variables phi, theta, and rho. So starting out with the first integral, we're going to integrate over rho squared d rho. That becomes equal to the following. Well, we still have the other two integrals, one over theta and one over phi. And when we integrate rho squared d rho, we get rho cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to the radius r. Then we still have the sine of phi d theta d phi left for the other two integrals. Of course, when we integrate that, and now we plug in the limits, when we plug in r, we get r cubed over 3. Plug in 0, we get 0. So this becomes r cubed over 3 times the two integrals that are remaining over phi and over theta, and that will be then sine of phi d theta d phi. Our next integral, we're now going to integrate over the angle theta all the way around 360 degrees around the cone. And of course, that will be from theta equals 0 to theta equals 2 pi, and we're integrating d theta. So that means we get equal to r cubed over 3 times the single integral left over phi. And then we have inside here, instead of d theta, well, we can already write, already write sine of phi d phi. That doesn't change. When we integrate d theta, we get theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. And if we plug in the upper limit, we get 2 pi. Plug in the lower limit, we get 0. So all we have is a contributing factor 2 pi multiplied times this. So this becomes 2 pi times r cubed over 3. And then we have the single integral left from, from uh, phi equal 0 to pi sixth, or 30 degrees, of the sine of phi d phi. So up until now, we have the same result as we did in the previous video as if we were integrating over a semisphere. It doesn't matter if we're integrating over a semisphere or a cone or the whole sphere. We always end up with this portion right here. The last portion is what makes the difference. Instead of going for a semisphere or a full sphere or just a cone-shaped portion of the sphere, this is the limit of integration that will determine how much of the full sphere we're going to use. In this case, we're only going to integrate from 0 to pi over 6 of this quantity right here. So this becomes equal to 2 pi r cubed over 3, which is what we had over here, times, now when we integrate the sine of phi d phi, we get the negative cosine of phi evaluated from phi equals 0 to phi equals pi over 6 or 30 degrees. Now, if you plug the values in, we get the following. This will be equal to 2 thirds pi r cubed, which is basically a half a sphere's volume, times, plug in the upper limit, we get minus the cosine of pi over 6, which is 30 degrees. And then from that, we subtract 
the negative cosine of zero. Now, if we evaluate those, we get the following. This is equal to 2 thirds pi r cubed times the cosine of 30 degrees is 0.866. Put a negative in front of that, that gives us a minus 0 0.866. And then this negative cancels out this negative, that becomes positive, the cosine of 0, which is 1. In other words, this is equal to, when we subtract the 2, we get 0 0.134 times 2 thirds pi r cubed. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide this by 2 and multiply this by 2. When we do that, we get the following. This is equal to take half of this, which would be 0 0.67, 0 or 0.067. When we double this, we get 1.134, that's correct, times 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, why did we write it like this? Because here we can see that this is the volume of a full sphere, and so it would be 0 0.067 times that, or 6.7% of the volume of a full sphere. So this can be written as 6.7% of the volume of a full sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Which means that if we take a cone-shaped section of the sphere, where the angle from the center to the edge of the cone is 30 degrees, that volume will be about 6.7% of the full volume of the entire sphere. And that's how it's done.